What do you mean I can't go inside that cave? I'm a dive instructor. Those rules don't apply to me. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina. If you are new to us, I just want to say welcome to our channel. I really hope that you find our videos interesting and entertaining and more importantly, educational. If you are new though, make sure you hit the little subscribe button over here and click the little bell icon. That way you will be notified each and every time that we upload a new video. If you are a long time subscriber of us, I just want to say thank you for coming back and joining us and I really hope you enjoy this video. Today's topic, we're going to kind of get into a heated area such as cave diving. Now I know there's a lot of dive sites out there that have overhead environments. Some people call them caverns, some people call them caves. What we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at the actual definitions of say open water diving, cavern diving, and cave diving. And I'm going to show you some actual examples of dives that I've been on say in the last few years. And I'm going to show you where the line was crossed. Where we went from say open water into a cavern environment and where we actually crossed the line say cavern into a cave environment. So without further ado, let's jump to the footage and I'll give you some great commentary throughout this video. Alright guys, so this first dive site that we're going to look at is one of my favorites. This is called Devil's Den. It's down in Williston, Florida. And I chose this site because it's so versatile. You can do open water diving, you can do cavern diving. There are some designated caves here, um, though they really don't recommend you going in them for the obvious reasons, and they really don't even want cave divers using these two particular caves. But I am going to show you several different parts of this dive that's considered open water and a swim through. We're going to talk about a cavern, and we're going to talk about when the cavern actually switches over to a cave by definition alone. But I want to give you a quick definition of what open water diving is and talk about what a swim through is before we get into the other two. Open water sites are basically just a body of water where you have a direct ascent to the surface um, without any type of overhead environment. So that could be a spring, a quarry, a lake, the ocean, you know, a nice beautiful coral reef, say 30 foot deep, you can always swim straight up to the surface. What a swim through is, it is an overhead environment, but there's a clear destination as far as the entry and exit points. So take my phone. Maybe this is the overhead environment, this is the entry, this is the exit, and as long as I can see both at the same time, and let's say it's a distance shorter than somewhere between 10 to 20 feet, that would be considered a swim through. So no matter where I'm at in this overhead environment, I can clearly see the entry point and the exit point. So as you can tell here in this part of the dive, we're in open water. Yeah, it's a little dark just because we are underground, but I have a clear uh, direct ascent to the surface at any given time. There's no overhead that's going to block me from doing that. Now here, briefly, we're going to transition into a cavern. So what's the definition of a cavern? A cavern is an overhead environment where you still have a direct ascent, but it's more of a diagonal. It's not just straight up. You're still going to have some of that ambient light coming from the surface, but you don't have um, a clear exit point, if you will. So it, in a cavern would be, I've got an, an entry that also designates as an exit point as well. And as I go in, there's no exit over here. As I go in, I'm in an overhead environment, but I, I have to return the same way I came from, and I'm still going to have some ambient light. So as you can see here, I'm clearly in a cavern. I've got ambient light coming over my shoulder. If I was to turn off my camera lights or my flashlight, then I would still be able to see uh, what I was doing and where I was at because of that ambient light, and I can use that ambient light as my exit point. Now here briefly, we're going to uh, switch over to an actual cave, and this is actually the exact same spot. So I'm going to show you where this particular cavern actually turns into a cave. And this is it here. As you can clearly see, there is zero ambient light in front of me. There is zero ambient light behind me. I have, at this point, effectively transitioned into a cave environment. Now, with a cave environment, cave environments, there is no depth rating to them. So it could be five foot deep. It can be 100 foot deep. It can be 200 foot deep. It doesn't really matter on the depth. With caverns, it tends to, to change around the 70 foot mark. So a cavern that is deeper than 70 foot tends to be considered a cave. But a cave, there is zero depth. 
distinction to it. It's basically where you have zero uh, ambient light. You cannot see your entry point or your exit point. This is clearly a cave right here. If I was to turn off my flashlight, it would just be pitch black. You wouldn't be able to know where to go without some type of guideline leading you out. Now this next site that we're going to look at is Blue Grotta. Blue Grotta is basically right across the street from Devil's Den. It's also down in Williston, Florida. It's a beautiful place to take all different types of divers. I really like Virgil. He's a little soft shell turtle here. Now another cool thing about Blue Grotta is you can see clear distinctions between a cavern and a cave and we're going to talk about them once again as we descend down. Now here we are actually in the open water portion or the open water environment of Blue Grotta. I have a clear, distinctive uh, ascent that I can come up. There is zero overhead that's going to block me. There are some swim through. Some of these platforms you see here, you can swim all the way up underneath them. You can swim up the main uh, deck area. You can swim up underneath it and pop out. Those would be considered swim throughs. Now we've actually transitioned into a cavern. We have that overhead environment, yet we're still above 70 foot. We also have plenty of ambient light coming down through us so we can see the entry we can see the exit which is the same part um, and, and like I said we're, we haven't reached the point where there's zero ambient light yet so we're still technically in a cavern here uh, and like I said this is a very open environment this particular cavern here is kind of recognized by the industry as okay for open water divers to adventure into at the 35 foot mark you are technically at the beginning of that cavern there's a little um, diving bell that you can swim up in, pull your reg out, and actually talk to uh, your dive buddy, which is really cool. Now we've actually transitioned over into the cave part of this dive. And once again, by definition alone, a cave is an overhead environment, may or may not be deeper than 70 feet. In this particular situation, it is deeper than 70 feet, and there is zero ambient light. Now, a lot of people will tell you that Blue Grotta is nothing more than a cavern because you swim down, you follow the rope, you swim up, and there's always gonna be ambient light. That is not actually the case. Here at the very, very bottom, you'll see where all the dark sealed is, Basically, this is the point of where it becomes a cave at Blue Grotta because there is zero ambient light. Yes, there is a large diameter rope that we use as a guideline to come back up, but by definition alone, this is a cave, and you can see how we transitioned from that cavern to the cave because if I turn off my flashlight, there's zero ambient light. By definition alone, that makes it a cave. Now, the, the good news is here, if you do happen to go that deep in Blue Grotta, you're not gonna be there for a very long time uh, because you've only gotta swim about 30 feet one way or the other, and you're gonna have that ambient light poking around the limestone, and you'll be able to see the, the exit point. Whether or not you feel that safe or not, this is one of the sites that the industry has kind of said, okay, we're not going to really consider this a cave, even though it is by definition alone, and it's a lot of open water and say deep students will go here uh, just because it is such an open area. But now we've actually transitioned back into the cavern. As you can see, as I pan the camera up, you'll see plenty of ambient light there. You can see the overhead environment. You can also see that large diameter rope leading us back out. But we have transitioned. This is another great site to go, say, from open water to cavern all the way to cave as well. But it's an absolutely gorgeous site to go to. It, it kind of gives you a clear distinction between open water cavern and cave. And, and it's one of my favorite spots. I take a lot of deep diver students here just because I can get them to 60, 80, and 100 feet. Um, it's a great place for your cavern training and even intro to cave at that. Now, the last place that we're going to look at is Jenny Springs, and this is down in High Springs, Florida. It's probably the most popular site in the northern Florida area just for ca caves and even caverns. Uh, I love taking open water students here. I love taking specialty students here just because there's so much that we can do. We can drift down the Santa Fe. We can do cavern training. We can do search and recovery. We can do uh, navigational training. It's just a beautiful site to go to. Here, we're clearly in open water. We've got a, a direct ascent to the surface without any type of overhead environment. As we start to enter the mouth of the ballroom of what's called Jenny Springs, we will clearly be inside of a cavern. It's an overhead environment. We've got plenty of ambient light coming from the surface, and we still have that entry and exit, even though it's only one part. So once again, we don't have a clear entry and a clear exit. We just have one spot where we're going to enter and exit out of. But now we're in a cavern. We're in an overhead environment. Obviously, we do got to have some lights down there, but we still have plenty of overhead or ambient light, if you will, poking through for us to see. Now, there are certain parts 
of the ballroom that are considered a cave. Once again, this is one of those sites that the industry has kind of said, well, it's so open and there's not really a spot where somebody can get stuck at. And I actually beg to differ there. There's actually plenty of places here at the, say the ballroom of Jenny Springs where you can actually get stuck. And those spots are where we're actually going to be transitioning over into that cave environment. Now at the very bottom of the ballroom, there's a grate that actually blocks off the actual entrance to the cave system. Not the entrance to the cave, but the entrance to the cave system, and you can't get beyond that. That's what the industry is actually considered a cave, but by definition, once you've reached that point, you are actually in a cave because there is zero ambient light. If you're holding on to the grate, which a lot of us will swim down, we'll grab onto the gate and let that flow of the water push us, but if you're holding on to that grate, there is zero ambient light. The limestone has actually blocked all ambient light from the surface. And by definition alone, there at the gray, you are technically in a cave. There's also another spot here that I want to briefly talk about. If you're going down into the ballroom, over to the far left-hand wall, there's a little swim through that you go through. And it's actually wide. You can get through it with a set of doubles. You can get through it with a, a single on your back or whatnot. But once you go through that swim through, that is also a cave as well. And it goes back into a lot, what I call a little turnaround or a little cul-de-sac, but it's a very narrow restriction up in there. And even myself, it's hard for me to get turned around once I'm in there. And once you go beyond that little swim through, then technically you are in a cave. As you can see here, there's zero ambient light. If it wasn't for our flashlights, uh, we wouldn't be able to see anything. But this is a clear definition of what a cave is. It's an overhead environment. Uh, doesn't matter on depth, and there is zero ambient light for us. So we're clearly in a cave here. Um, but to get back to what I was saying, if you go over to that left side, there's zero ambient light. Uh, there's only one entry and one exit. Now, once you're up in there, there is kind of a ledge that you can swim up over in a ledge. And I've done it a few times in side mount because that's really the only way I can fit through is when I'm in side mount. Because if I've got back mounted doubles or even a single on my back, I can't get through that that little ledge area. So a side mount diver is going to be the only one that's actually going to be able to go through there. With that being said, there is still zero ambient light. So your only exit point is to come back through the swim through that you went through initially. So once again, you're in a cave at that point. My suggestion to you, if you are not cave certified, do not go in a cave. If you are not cavern certified, do not go in a cavern unless you are with an instructor who is cavern or cave certified and knows what he's doing. Maybe you're doing it for training. Here's the grate that we're talking about. Like I said, if I was to cut off my light here at the grate, you wouldn't see anything. It would be complete uh, pitch blackness out there. Uh, there's no ambient light hitting this grate whatsoever. You have to get about 25 feet away from the grate and pop up about four or five feet up off the bottom just to catch the ambient light from the mouth. So once again, if you're not cave certified, please stay out of caves. If you're not cavern certified, go get trained to go in that cavern or at least be with a cavern or cave instructor that can lead you through it. Now, certain swim throughs are going to be okay. Even this, the ballroom, the main part of the ballroom at Jenny is going to be perfectly okay for you to swim in, swim out. Just understand when you transition from open water with the swim through to cavern back into a cave. Now, as you can clearly see, we're back in the cavern portion of the ballroom. There is plenty of ambient light for us to see here. Um, and like I said, this is another gorgeous spot. I love taking all types of divers here, open water divers, uh, cavern divers, drift divers, rescue divers, my professional divers. I love this spot as well. It's just so unique. There's so much to do and so much to see. But guys, I hope this kind of gives you a better understanding of the difference of open water with a swim through, what an actual cavern is, and what an actual cave is, and the distinction between them, there is a fine line, and you can cross that line without actually knowing it. But hopefully this video will help you out in understanding when you actually went inside a cavern, when you went inside a cave, and whether or not you should have done it, please make sure that you are trained properly to do it and that you hold the right certifications to do that type of diving. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it educational. I hope you understand the need for proper training. If you got any question on any of the things we talked about, please put it down in the comment section below. If you did like this video, do me a huge favor. Hit that like button. Definitely share this video as well. Guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.